Oh, I'm dropper. She's not going to get her money, or she may get some of the money if somebody just feels like, uh, go and bring that woman that we saw a video on Maya Gun's diary Politico. Go and bring her. How much is her salary for seven years that uh, she's shouting like that? How much? Now, seven million, sir. Uh -huh. yeah, because of seven million, she's shouting like that. Go and bring her here and say, okay, governor will do something about it. Madam, I pray you get your money, oh. I hope I actually really pray that you do get your money. Now, I'm going to use this medium just to quickly reach out. Uh, okay, you know something? There is a, there is a clip, uh, an interview, or should we say uh, an investigation, okay, where uh, the supposed illegal oil refineries in Niger Delta, eh? They call them illegal, by the way, you know. There are local refineries there where people have uh, devised some of their own local technology on how to process crude oil, refine it into fine products like, end products like uh, petroleum, diesel, and even kerosene. So this uh, report from uh, the Arise uh, News, the credit for this video goes to them, by the way. It's, it's an incredible job. But there's another part of it I want you to please pay attention to because this is Nigeria. Pay attention to this, okay? Let's watch it. Hold on. My cameraman fell but quickly got up to continue his recording. It was just a demonstration of how fire is lit at an illegal refinery site. On this day, the men were not on duty, but few are willing to tell their story. I'm a graduate of law. I went to the youth service in North, and I came back. There's nothing here. We've been suffering. I got married. There's no money anywhere. So when I see that my friends and my brothers are trying to make money, I had to join them because there's no money anywhere. I am a graduate of engineering. I graduated 1998. I served my youth service at Taco, Taraba State. When I come back, I was suffering. I was a deccan, from the deccan to taxi driver. You see the first men stopping us, taking money from us. That made me, that made me to be very hungry. And later I was hearing, I see people are making money where I come from. Outside people are making money where I come from. I decided there and I come in to my creek and I started doing this business. You guys contribute largely to crude oil theft and then the nation is losing so much of its wealth. For me, I am not thief. What about those that are using vessels, mother vessels from the ocean, loading? I am just taking a little jerry cans. This is jerry can. For whatever I am seeing there, those are saying this. They are using biro to thief. They are the people even contributing from those Bunkery. Our own, this is not bunkery. We are just doing, we are supplying uh, kerosene to the filling station. No filling station, no place they have kerosene. And the government does not matter. They got the poor people. This is my own property. What about the north? They are doing their gold, doing this. What, they, what would they call those people? Okay, those people are not thief. Because when the poor man do, they say thief. But when the rich man do, they call embezzlement. I am not thief. I am a businessman. The conversation continued as we walked down the narrow footpath of the illegal refinery camp. What if the federal government, you know, makes an attempt to employ you? Would you quit this job? What kind of job do they want to employ me for first? This thing I'm doing is okay for me. It's okay to my people. The people that are given job now, most of them now, see, today they've not paid them. Our fathers are dead, they don't pay them. Pensioners are dead, they've not paid them. Uh, university lecturers, they are on strike. They want to give me a job. What kind of, is it the job you give me, then you not pay me? The lecturers are looking for peanut to settle that they will not. Because their children are outside the country. They don't value the poor people. I try to further get to this point. The business of refining oil the local way is a dangerous venture. Are you concerned that this work you're doing could consume your life? I know that. 
but I don't have any choice. This is where I make my family smile. This is where I pay school fees, the little, little school fees I can pay. This is where I feed my mom, my dad, everybody from. So if I have to stop it, where will I go to? Though it's very risky. We've lost so many of our friends, brothers and all that. But today, we are still here. Not that this, what, what we are doing is good for us. It's not good. But we are doing it because we have to make ends meet. You will see sometime it will catch fire. The next, we will still hustle. And come back because I will not go and steal. So it is one day at a time. It is one day at a time. Any day we wake up and we succeeded, we say, God, thank you. Anyone that does not lose his life. You see, most of the graduates are taxi drivers. No job. The government has failed us. They have failed us. We don't care whether we die. Like me, I don't care. Because that is where I survive with my family. Until the government make a genuine provision for we, the Niger Delta people, they will quit. You cannot quit and go home and sleep hungry. We will not go and steal. We will not go and carry a gun to rob. This is the only way. If you are coming here, it's very risky. But somebody will always come here because we don't want the kerosene to come into the side. So somebody will always come and lock here. They demonstrate further how lock crude here. oil goes through the heating processes and escape house. into the designated I tanks. The Nigeria government should value with the Ninja Delta youths that are involved in this refinery. We have talent. They don't know that Ninja Delta boys have talent. We produce kerosene, diesel, fuel, even gas. If you give us the opportunity, we will do more. The whole of Nigeria, you cannot see kerosene to buy. We, the Ninja Delta boys, are the ones producing kerosene and supplying the filling station. Then they say they want to stop bunker. How? Are they giving out job? There is no job in this Nigeria. Niger Delta, we are suffering. Since we are suffering, this oil is our own. The only solution to this problem, you have to legalize this bunker for us. Let us pay tax. Allow us to take the oil and pay tax to the federal government. It is quite revealing at the camp. The men reject the ignoble cognomen of crude oil thieves, but instead seek a space to operate in Nigeria's petroleum industry. At the expense and risk of life and limb, this has become a way of life for many youths of the oil-producing states of the Niger Delta region of Nigeria. That is what I wanted you to see. The graduates who now resorted into self-help to survive in Nigeria. Graduate, graduates who are willing to take risks, risks that uh, could take their lives just like that. They did not, I mean, they do not care. I may be curious. I don't know. Like I've, I've, I have seen people who have taken risks simply because they want to feed their families, because they want to take care of their family. They have put their lives on the line for for almost a peanuts. But Nigerians that can go and take any sort of risk just to escape poverty are the same Nigerians who are afraid to die because the criminal politicians that are destroying the country, destroying their lives will kill them. So they are afraid. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't understand because I know this. 
if you see what people, what men do daily, the risk they put their life. I'm not even talking about illegal things. Now I'm talking about those things that are actually legal. Just to hand something so that I can go and take care of my family. I do not want my family to suffer. Whatever it's going to be like, you need to see the type of risk job, you, they call it the Nigerians or men, actually faces. But the same men who will tell you that I know I would die. I know I could die anytime. I know the risk. The same men will tell you, I don't want to die because you see, if the same determination you always have, because of the motivating spirit that says you need to do something in order for your family to have this or have that. And you are ready to risk it. Eh? Just to make sure you feed your family. Do you know if you have that same spirit of going after these criminals from every part of Nigeria? Right from the councillors to local government to all of this. If you have the same courage to confront them Face your fear and tell them, you kill us today or we kill you or you do something. Because we are going to die anyway. You know I mean, everything you are doing is to kill us anyway. We are not safe because of your greed, because of your corruption, because of all of this. We are not safe. So before they kill us, we will kill you first too because you have to do something. Like, I mean, you could have such spirits, can't you? Some people that are doing conga. No people they wear conga, take their I mean, take that such risk and enter ground in all of that. And God knows how many conga you have to dig to keep your family away from hunger. Imagine if you are a well digger. Do you know how many conga you have to dig? I just thought of that sometimes while I was like, and these guys were they seemed very smart too. Okay, that's why I believe that they are graduates. They said, Nigeria is, I mean, the corruption in Nigeria has made your refineries to turn to every year promise. It's coming next year. It's coming by December. When December comes, they'll tell you, you know, it's June 2025. When June comes, they'll tell you, no, 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 it's, it's June 2026. But they are working to make sure that it, it starts working by June 2025. And that's it. Well, there are smart guys who said, it is our oil. We are suffering, which is true. This is how we feed our own family. But if they allow us to take the oil, take account, uh, take a, I mean, sorry, take the, the account of how much of this crude oil we are taking, we will refine crude oil for Nigeria. All these trillions you are spending on your refineries and all that. Of course, do them. But you see all these artisanal refiners, they can be very, very helpful. The technology they are using, this could be the technology that could actually save Nigeria trillions for those who really care, but you know they don't, right? So they resorted into stealing it. So Nigeria is losing. They are not buying the crew. They are not paying taxes or anything. I don't want to blame them. I'm just saying. Eh? But they are smart enough to say, instead of coming to come and attack us or to arrest us and all of that, if Zamfara gold is for Zamfara people, well, what, what is wrong with uh, Bayelsa Hoy belonging to Bayelsa people? They even offer to pay tax. Do you get what I'm trying to say there, right? Which means they said in Nigeria today, if you are buying kerosene, hmm, there's possibility that eh, you are buying the refined kerosene, refined crude oil from the Niger Delta and not imported kerosene. It would have been refined by those boys. Huh? Unfortunate. So this guy had this to say about a tiff number for those who probably are yet to great take it. I mean, grasp it. Is he, he is an Atif Kusa spokesperson I had? No Balaba, but also guys. Has created uh, you know instability and you know and, and, and all so, of that. Uh, in in the statement released by your office, uh, in the words of uh, the former vice president, it does look like someone who has a very sure um, uh, uh, solutions to the problem. And when he mentioned Argentina, there are those who say, God forbid, <laughs> Atiku Abubakar's uh, uh, suggestions of Argentina and how the president approached things, God forbid it happened in Nigeria, that that was a very wrong example to make. Listen. Was that a goof by your listen, principal? Listen, uh, Shion, God forbid, the scenario 
we have playing out in Nigeria may be far worse than that of, you know, of, uh, of Argentina. But why did your principal say the Tinubu government should use the Argentina approach listen, what when I, the Argentina approach looked like a bad idea? Listen, before, before December, you know, the new president of Argentina, you know, came on board. I mean, the indices were, were terrible. But look at what, what has he done. What, what he has done is, you know, what is important. He has caught, you know, uh, you know all of the wastages, you know, in government. He's flying, a, you know, a business class. He's not using the, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the, the, the state, uh, you know, assets to advance his, uh, you know, his personal interest. Using the, you know, you know, the aircraft, to, you know, for his sons to go party, you know, you know, government somewhere. Doing otherwise. Sorry? Is the noble government doing otherwise? The noble government is doing worse than that. Really? Oh, yeah. Example of that? Example of that is what happened in, uh, in Dubai when it took people who didn't have any business. They just went there to have a photo, you know, you know Photoshop for the Instagram. Is Look it Dubai look... or Doha? Both in Dubai first, at the COP, before Doha. In Doha, it was worse. His children who didn't have any business being, you know, you know on, on, on that delegation. Could it be that they don't have that, any business? They, what business do they have? Is it possible that the president has assigned them some roles? I don't understand about that. No, I'm just are, imagining. Are those roles constitutional? Were they, are they elected officials? Are they appointed officials? What are we talking about? You see, what we have now is nepotism and bigotry pro max. That's mm -hmm. what we, we thought we've seen the worst of that in the era of Buhari. But I'm sorry to say that it's never been this bad. People are appointed, your friends, their wives, their daughters, their sons, their son-in-law. This year, Conde. What are we talking about? Are there no competent Nigerians from different parts of the country? Does that mean that those people too are not competent? Are they, they not they, Nigerians? They are competent. But the point I'm trying to t make is that you need to run an inclusive government. You see, inclusive... We need to be part of that government. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Like, we are not part of it and, you know, all that stuff. Anyway, he was talking about the impunity of Etif Numbu and all that. Eh? So, uh, my time is running and I'm, I'm planning to actually take calls tonight. But let us go, uh, I don't know, should we say sympathize with the people of Ibadan? For the passing of the Olubadan of Ibadan? Hmm? I am trying to find the right word. Baba Waja, the Olubadon of Ibadan, died yesterday. And according to them, he has been, I believe now, he has been buried according to the Islamic right. He was a Muslim. I'm going to show you what I found. It all started from when they told everybody at Ojaba yesterday that Olubadon the Waja at the age of 81. Here. Uh, the Olubadon, the uh, is that called Paramount Ruler? Because we it's, it's so different in a Badon, like the way they do their royal stool, all right? It's not like the you know the other Yoruba land and Ibadan historically, uh, didn't really have a king, okay? So Ibadan happened to be where the uh, Allah finds warriors. Where the Alafin's army, that's where they used to be to stay. And that's where the Areonoka camp for Yoruba land. Alafin's or Areonoka camp for also used to live. So it was a place where whenever Alafin or for you at the time uh, is uh, going to war and we need to uh, sort of mobilize or sort of give the marching order to his own 
uh, general, hey, what do we call our own account for Yoruba again? No, eh? Generalismo, something like that. Is the overall captain, commander, general, overseer, all of that, right? But historically, Bado has no king. But yeah, the history called written later when, uh, uh, you know, the same uh, houses that now sort of chooses who leads them and they call that Olubadon. So it's not like, you know, it's not like the traditional way of, uh, you know, princes succeeding their fathers, right? Like you have the, you have the crowned prince because we do have crowned princes here in Yoruba land. It's our homes that uh, the royal crown is hereditary. You get that now? So if my papa be king, I'm likely going to be king or my own son will likely be a king. So you get that kind of thing that they have to, but it's different. In Ibadan, they are chiefs. You see the world, the man that died now as Olubadon, he was chief. So the Olubadon that died the last time. So it's those houses that we have to nominate Mogaji. It's called Mogaji Italy. Mogaji means uh, pretty much like the head of the family. So another, so who's going to be the next, the next uh, four, five Olubadons? Everybody knows them. Okay, you get now. So this one that died, he knows who is next to him, who is going to be the next Olubadon. And the one after that, and the one after that. And he's quite an old man. 81 years outside the house, or outside the palace, will you say? I need to tell you this, okay, in case if you are not uh, Yoruba, okay, you see that drum uh, is our traditional uh, talking drum, okay? When we say talking drum, you need to listen to what the drum says and people repeating what it says. is, uh, you know, sort of giving the pledge, yeah, I mean, sorry, uh, a sort of a praise and all that for everyone who is there to mourn the, the past or the, the dead king. Let's go over it again. <laughs> Oh! 
Thank you so much. Oh, I have uh, people in the comments, especially on YouTube, who are doing their best to help us set the record uh, straight. So uh, they have just said that uh, Basharun mm, is uh, the head of uh, Allah Afin's army, as well as some uh, mentioning others, but uh, Are Onoka Kanfu mm, is called the generalismo. So whenever there is going to be any war, and most Are Onoka Kanfu is actually that of uh, the Allah Afin. Okay? So Are Onoka Kanfu, they said Are Onoka Kanfu cannot live in the same town with the king is pretty much so powerful that uh, back in the days, okay, so he had to have his own special place to stay. So if you are referring to the Oyomesi, Oyomesi eh, are the council of chiefs in Oyo. Those are like uh, the decision makers, those who advise the king. And that's where you will see the Bashar. That's where you will see Ashipa. That's where you will see the other chiefs who sit in council. With Allah, me. Are Onoka Kanfo does not sit in council with Allah, me. He's only called upon to get the army ready. And on the order of Allah, me, they march. That is the history. But again, we all learn every day. Oh. So thanks for the effort as well, because a lot of people are watching. And indeed, I advise you read more, okay? And thank you very much. So it might be Ladroja. They said it's. It is likely going to be the former governor for your state. I'm so sorry I did not read that far on it, okay? I just want to make sure that I mentioned it, right? I didn't read far. I am. I know that Ladoja is also, but I believe Ladoja is like a Keta or, a, you know, is pretty much like there's somebody before him. He used to be the Ekeri Olubadon. That is uh, Ladoja. But I'm not too sure because I know, sorry, I, I have witnessed three Olubadon died in the last in the last five years or six years. This one that died is actually just two years as Olubadon. Before him and before that one, in the last six years or so alone, the Olubadon have died. So if Ladoja is now next, I will figure it out. Anyway, thank you. Here is the body of Olubadon leaving the UCH Badon. This was after it was pronounced dead and everybody was getting ready. I was to be prepared for barrier. Olubadon's body, leaving UCH earlier today. A senator himself, Senator Lekon Balogun Olubadon of Ibadan, the late Olubadon now. And this is uh, the last image of his uh, body before the barrier, just for your glimpse. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, uh, in Yoruba land, we don't really say the king 